It's June the 26th, 2021, and you're watching The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And we're back. All of us. Hey, how are you doing? Hey. Jeremiah, Adrian, Hello. and Imar. Good to be here. Good, good to, to be, be here. It's good. That's wonderful. <laughs> It is. It's yeah. a great thing. It is a great thing. It's a nice day. Well, it is here anyway. I suppose that's, I can't say yeah. that, can I? Really? Because who knows when people will be listening or watching? And and all four of us <laughs> live in completely different places. But, but I've had a nice day. It's Saturday, so I've been out in the garden doing garden stuff, which which was all right. Bit yeah, fun. I've, I've done, I mowed the lawn today. So me too. I had a lazy day today. <laughs> I got up. I made coffee. <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> well, you can mow your lawn later, Jeremiah. <laughs> if I had a lawn, I would mow it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell so, that to the cact cactuses. Oh, that's, that's a sad story. Jeremiah doesn't have a lawn to mow. Oh, I have plenty of green. <laughs> plenty there's of green. A, there's a really good episode. Was that on Freakonomics? On one of these... I think it was on, on, on Freakonomics on the podcast where they looked at the economy of lawns and... Like how much yeah. time gets sunk into lawns, how much water mm -hmm. gets put into lawns, and fertilizers their, and their purpose, poison, <laughs> and yeah, like it's a really amazing uh, thing to but, look at. But also, if I remember, I remember hearing that that was a few years back. Gosh, that's a yeah. good memory you've got, Chris. Yeah. But the I think the the silver lining was that collectively everybody's lawns are actually a ma a, a, ma a, a big a a big carbon trap so it's a good way of getting carbon back to ground because people are you know people are, are uh, unless you mow it and then you lawns. release the carbon again don't you dare uh, i say that the cost of putting in lawns growing those <laughs> kinds of things <laughs> transporting them and whatnot more what? than quote reverse offsets let me let me try the segue Possibly, here yes. but one thing a lawn does <laughs> it, it makes your it makes the outside of your house look very minimal Right? Oh, it's like a oh, green... Oh, 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 I see what you did there. Well done, wasn't it? Segway. There I we thought go. we were going to have to record a show of this week in mowing. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, well, yeah, today's episode is about... Um, is minimalism. About minimalism. 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 Yeah, minimalism. Yeah, and yes. uh, Imar, has, Imar has slaved over this for I don't know how long, but... <laughs> hours. Hours at least. Hours, hours, days. Days. Okay, Imar, how many Imar. weeks since I've been here that long? Let's let's yeah. hear what uh, um, what you came up with. Okay, um, it was really. I don't actually know how we came up with this one. Uh, if anybody, it feels like it's been ages since I've even I'm been not here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just go get off your ass and do something? And then that's how it works. So um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I enjoyed having a look into uh, minimalist photography and just thinking about the kind of movement of minimalism overall, I suppose. It's kind of, it's almost a way of life, isn't it, for some people? It's not just, uh, you know, in terms of photography, it's it's a it's a kind of way of being. There's, yeah, there's absolutely. It's been very popular. Thousands and thousands of hours on YouTube uh, devoted to how to live more minimally. And we all know about, what's her name? Marie, Marie Kondo. <laughs> Kondo and, um, yeah, her philosophies. So I suppose that's, really where the concept of minimalism came from was the East and the Japanese kind mm. of traditions and it seems to have really uh, lingered uh, through their history and, and still come all the way up to now. So it was fun to go back. I suppose minimalist photography came out of the movement in minimalist art um, and <sighs> it doesn't it always, um, doesn't photography always follow art, I suppose. There's, in a way. There, uh, there's some interesting minimalist um, crypto art where... Uh, and, and <laughs> there these that's for later. <laughs> that's for the future sorry, of minimalist sorry, photography. But, get, but get, I just wanted to say that the now. most minimalist <laughs> work of art that I've, I've ever seen, and it, I, I believe it sold for a lot of money, was a single pixel. <laughs> can I can I ask in our, in our book who had two minutes thirty for that? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I guess I guess um, some people arrive at minimalism because they have just they've just um, piled up so much stuff through their life that they have to kind of tidy up, right? Get rid of yes. the, 
the stuff that's too extra. And that might, that things, might go for, yeah. for photography as well when over time your, your photos become more more full and then you end up with yeah, yeah. the wish to, to reduce stuff. <laughs> Do you know I, what, think, I think that's a really nice point, Chris, mm-hmm. actually, because I, I, now you say it, I've never thought of it that way, but I can... I, I could almost instantly imagine the a sort of uh, a, a wave uh, through my own photography over the years of, of busyness versus minimalism. There are times mm. when I just say, I think to myself, I just want to to cut through it all and and you know cut out a bunch of stuff. Um, I have this ongoing collection of photos I've been making over a period of years, just called ceilings, right? Yeah. And and some of them are like big crystal chandeliers in fancy mm. buildings like palaces in venice and stuff like that um and and others are just sort of you know a bit of paint with a crack in it mm. <laughs> like, yeah. mm. so i'm definitely i definitely sometimes like to to switch it up and go minimalist i i can see this in my own photography and uh i'm not sure how, how i got there but i see more and more like additional uses for photography like you might need that for some illustration work or you might need that for I don't know, as a as a cover on a magazine, and uh, you better make it a bit more minimalist, so you have enough space for all the other stuff that gets added to later. Hmm. Mm. I suppose um, using minimalism in your own photography is a good way of kind of stretching your muscles, maybe, or a little bit. Um, I yeah. found that that lovely webinar that you have a link to there by. Um, I cannot remember. Oh, yeah. Judy Hancock Holland is the lady's name. And she's got a really teachery sort of um, a presence to her, which I liked. And um, her approach is lovely. And and, and actually, when you think about it, I I kind of find that I suppose I use that um, way of seeing myself is that she takes the bigger picture and she goes through. um, Here's a scene. But here within it there are 10 or 15 minimal images that I can find within this one big busy Mm. scene. Ah. And she kind of brings you in and and gives you ideas of how to maybe uh, apply that to, uh, you know, wherever you are yourself. Uh, And thought that could be a really useful exercise. That's interesting. I did something like that once a couple of years back, maybe not quite two years ago. Sorry. And uh, (laughs) uh, what I did, what I deliberately set out to make a series of images where that there was a main image which was quite a wide angle but with uh, a, a fairly wide aspect ratio so it might have been wide angle but it might have been like a two to one or a 2.2 to one or something like that and then set myself about the task of cutting a a nine by 16 slices out of it like there was a cookie cutter so can i find an area of detail interest can i find three or four areas in this one image where i could make a a, an interesting nine by 16 vertical image out of something mm. and it was a really fun exercise actually i enjoyed doing that i should do that again sometime so it kind of an interesting way to play around with composition and learning all about that yeah i think because that like i suppose in minimalism composition is nearly everything isn't it well, if you've Agreed. got no, if you've got no, if you've got nothing in your photo, then the composition is really important. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I, I kind of, I thought that was a lovely uh, webinar, and then I started to think about my own stuff, and like I started to think about why I would, um, why I would choose a minimal to a minimalist approach over a kind of um, a wide approach. And one of the reasons I find, which is maybe a bit strange, but um, I find that if I'm in a particularly ugly place or um, a place that is unappealing to me kind of visually, that um, honing in on maybe some sort of detail or abstract within that scene is a way to kind of capture the feeling of it without having to photograph something that I perceive to be unattractive or you know, um, not interesting to look at. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I would even yes. argue that that no matter where you are, there is there is a, a minimalist photo to be had. There. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. But um, I tend, I would Who's tend towards that. Who's deleting our show notes? Hmm? No, that was me adding something, okay, not um, deleting. They, they just but went del- away it, the entire thing. I, un- I undid it. Sorry for that. Just. When when I went in, it was deleted, <laughs> so I don't know what I was trying to find it. <laughs> we have a we have a shared <laughs> document here, and uh, um, yeah, I was trying to post anything. Anyway. I will not. <laughs> 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 I have no idea. 
It's an organic show, this one. No, week. it was about minimalism. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, That's that cool. was <laughs> truly minimalist show notes here, right, right a minute ago, yeah. Do you think <laughs> that, that, um, that there is an interesting balance between, like, what we would call hyper-minimalism, you know, like a tree on snow, you know, the, that classic one little element, and um, photographs that are made of extreme clutter, which also have a texture and, and impact. And they, they both, in some ways, speak to the same um, instinct. There, there's there's the, the kind of purity on the one hand, or, or, or and the the other one is more of an encompassing. I mean, at, um, at one point when the clutter becomes too overbearing, it kind of goes around back <laughs> on, on the backside, you know, and yeah. becomes becomes just a, like like a, like a tapestry, like a like yeah. a canvas. So sure, I know, and, yeah. I know that we all brought some images to the table this week, um, and I don't know about you, but when when I kind of went back to try and I kind of trawled back, I didn't take any new photographs, but I kind of trawled back through some of the ones I had and I realized that I, I do like a minimal photo. But then again, I kind of found myself questioning, are these really minimalist? Is is I did the you same. Know, or are they just close ups? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it, that's. Let's see. It's, it's I'm a not tricky sure. one, isn't it? I'm still not sure. In, it's a tricky one because, in some ways, uh, photographic composition is is an exercise in reduction. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah, and so it's it's as much sometimes about what you don't have in it or what you deliberately exclude from the from the image as opposed to to what is there. So, it's 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 a tricky one. Sorry, I'm quiet. I I'm, I'm just looking so, at the yeah. photos I, here. Do you do you think that that um, for example textures um, or, or simplicity? That's definitely of minimalist. Forms, I think yeah, that was probably that's definitely minimalist. Mm. Um, is is you know one could define it by 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 saying few elements in the picture or uh, the elements in the picture are very structured and simple. Mm, like that mm. that when I took this you know a few days ago, and it was very Paul Strandy of me I think, but but. Um, <laughs> While I didn't say minimalist, it just had such simple elements to it um, that it just felt that it belonged in that kind of graph. May have been kind of mis. It should probably That's be graphic shape, whatever. It's an interesting um, challenge, uh, Jeremiah. I mean, yeah, for for those listening in the audio, the, the picture we're looking at now is a, is a a roof that looks like it's sort of an industrial, well, not industrial, but it's sort of a glass atrium of a building looking at up at it. At least it looks that way to me. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's a sidewalk uh, with light through a fence. Oh, it's, it's a fence. Is it? Ah, okay. so, but, uh, but who's to say? I was thinking it was a very impressive glass atrium of a building. But okay, no, I can see now you say that. I can see that part of it which could be a fence i might be wrong and part of it which would be shadow so yeah, that's really interesting because right you've got a you've got a very distinct pattern there and i wouldn't initially yeah. call that a minimalist photo uh, it, it, there's because there's a lot going on in it and so that is interesting it, the we may, perhaps we're carrying different definitions of the word minimal or perhaps is there, is yeah. there really a lot going on I would argue that the the photo is is just a few areas that are distinctly different, mm. like a like a crosshatch mm. on a on a drawing or something. Mm -mm. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's what captivated yeah. me. Yeah. Just variations on the same theme of textures and and black and white. Uh, and it's kind of all and, the same. They're just in different yeah. angles mm. and in different yeah. sizes, pretty much. So yeah, I guess so, I guess yeah. we have a we have a we have a bit of a floating boundary here for sure it's interesting to see everyone's different choices as well so mm -hmm. um throw up another one there <laughs> let me see what else do we have throw Here up is is probably throw yeah, that's <laughs> another one of mine I, yeah I, I found that an interesting <laughs> choice a really interesting choice yeah again yeah. um it's is a it, floor if, if you and mm. it's a it yeah, kind of it kind of feels a bit busy yeah, because of the of the texture of the floor and the pattern on the floor. Um, As you move back from it, it becomes more minimalist. But yeah, just mm. squint, squint a bit and it turns into just a gray. Yeah. It could soup. be like a sea of people, even couldn't it? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Is that one? No, that's and, that's um, not on the, among the minimalist ones, is it? 
That no, it is. It is. Oh, it yeah. Is. Okay. Um, so this yeah. Jeremiah looks to me like one of your model three D models. Yeah. 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 Mm. You mean? Oh my God! You mean? It doesn't look like the real Mount Fuji. No. <laughs> and the sun at night? <laughs> well, it could be the moon if it's at night, it could couldn't be. it? <laughs> I, I, I would argue this is rather minimalist. See, this feels okay. more naturally so, so it feels more naturally minimalist to me than the 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 other ones we've just shared. I, I get agree with that. But and yeah, and okay, by, sorry Chris. And and by and by uh, taking most of it out of focus you create you you reduce clutter that way so um mm. that that is definitely a reduction in detail by reducing the contrast by making it unsharp almost throughout mm. with just a few little exceptions yeah mm. 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 interesting yeah i think you know minimalist photography you know it when you see it um there are some you know, I, I'd look at this. This is uh, two boys on a beach. This doesn't Te- technically feel like one of them's a girl, but I'll let you off. Well, <laughs> we're in gender fluidity culture. They are a long right way now, away so from really the camera. Matter. I'll it, give you that. But that, that I'm, sure she, I'm sure if she was in, if sure if she was on the show with us, she would take umbrage at that. But I'll, then. I would not take. I would not put this in the in the minimalist box. I think. N- nor would I. Even though there's two I'm elements sure of which you would, are yeah. glued to, since they are your offspring, but mm-hmm. but um, uh, I think there's so many things in this, like that it, shadow yeah. uh, on the right, kind of moves the eye to there, and then you have the ocean, and then the horizon line, and then you have the two elements, and so I think so. It's a, is minimalism a, uh, it, does minimalism in, include more of an abstraction then? that part of it i think it abstracts reality yeah. uh, maybe I, it does maybe is is it is what what makes this um kind of not look quite there is it the the line of the water the tide line like if that tide line was straight you know which it couldn't uh, be obviously okay. but yeah. you know what i mean like if that line was straighter it would it would be more of a plane on its own it's interesting i popped this one in our water looks I put this one in our group chat here to, for us to look at because I think I put a question mark on it. Uh, but it's it's because mm. it's it was one that I thought okay, well, it's there's it depends on what you think of uh, of there being is there a lot going on or is there not? I mean, there there are there are three broad sections of the image. There is the sky, there is the sea, and there is the sand, um, and uh, that to me showed a bit of simplicity but perhaps mm. to others it doesn't but it's, it's, let me take you know, a shot at a definition here i think if you look at an image and this basically discounts at least two of the three images that i posted mm-hmm. if your eye has to travel around the picture to fully comprehend it it is not minimalist uh-huh. if the eye mm-hmm. sees it in a kind of zen master stroke of like yes that's the image than it truly is. Oh, that's so a good way a, to look at it, actually, isn't it? If there's a focused yeah. single element that, that is committed, one could then say that it is minimalist. So so clearly this picture of my kids on the beach then is not minimalist. But the, no. the, so there's a there's a segue one then, which is I think is one to the left, Chris. If we, we, So this this is an interesting one um, to me. Uh, again, asking a, asking a question. Um, so this is taken from a boat um, and it is a picture of the southern tip of Manhattan Island um, uh, and as such and as it has uh, the, um, uh, the the new uh, actually st- still being built um, uh, re- World Trade Center. World Trade Center thank you yes um, in in the uh, in, in the image um, is one could argue Jeremiah is is instantly recognizable if uh, I, I, it, I would but, say but, but if there were no other buildings event. around it would be minimal i mean ah, reduction okay. mm-hmm. there is one element of reduction in that and in the last photo that we didn't really touch on and that is uh, the lack of color so you have a very minimalist color palette with just mm. black and white and gray tones in between yes this particular image i th- think is probably shot on ilford pan f 50 <gasps> film something like that it's either that or it's a delta 100 but it's an ilford film of one kind or another because i remember what i took on that trip 
So let's see. Dead air. Do we have more? <laughs> that one is I'm just staring. There's just one more, which is the last one of mine. So this is a, this is an Instax shot, uh, a silhouette of a person either leaning on or holding uh, the branch of a tree. It or was, with an arm that is... Uh, yeah, I really like this. Or with a really long yeah, arm, yes, that looks a lot like a tree, yes. A tree, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, difficult to tell in silhouette. But this was taken on a very foggy day. In fact, I think it was not so much fog, but it was one of those dust storms that blow through occasionally from time to time. We get we get them here. They come up from the Sahara. Uh, and, and sometimes you can get some very, very weird light. Um, and uh, very, it only happens very occasionally, and I think this was taken then. Um, so, let's, so, so is this instantly recognisable and the, and and therefore minimal? Yeah, I'd say this is yeah, pretty I'd minimal. I'd say that. Yeah, I would as well. Yeah. yeah. So, and it. Sorry, go ahead. It's a little bit disconcerting as well because you you have to look at it twice, and and intriguing, and I think that's a minimalist imagery is very intriguing isn't it like yeah okay okay so so one thing that happens with we are us humans we are pattern matchers we're trying to uh, always try to make sense of what we're looking at and in a picture like this our mind goes through like a rolodex of things that we know and tries to make sense of it and oh that's a silhouette of a person but is it is that part of a tree and so on mm. so you end up with uh, with this guessing game and that makes it more engaging the opposite where would would be a picture where it's like immediately obvious what's on there you don't have any questions next and this one mm. uh, <laughs> certainly makes it more interesting Definitely. i think that that as we as we kind of drill down on this uh, the hope is for those listening um, is is to instill a a kind of um, a a new way or an existing way or sharpened way of going out and looking uh, in a very uh, practiced way at your surroundings and finding those patterns and those uh, extremely sim- simple compositional elements that redefine where you are. Right. Um, and uh, on a personal note. Um, <laughs> I wanted yeah. to post this, of course. I have mm-hmm. ended up probably eliminating most of our show notes, which have gladly been restored. Um, <laughs> just a path to, <laughs> to a folio on my uh, website uh, entitled LA Water, which is really a study, I believe, in kind of classic minimalism. And it, all it is, uh, after a year in pandemic and going through walks, uh, I photographed uh, the canals near my home, but also uh, drawn to looking down at where I was walking in the city and starting to see the the kind of um, patterns that are built around um, the kind of infrastructure that happens sort of below our feet that we don't notice. And it really did make me hyper aware of everything that's going on under us. There, there you go. Um, there's, you know, I have, I think, around 20 images of, of same, some being uh, a little more um, bolder composed, but they all just have a very simple uh, element. Um, they're designed as abstractions of reality. And um, this was a very good project for me because it really kind of heightened my awareness and focused my attention on composition and aesthetics um, so it's an interesting it exercise. Very, it is. So, it's, it's a. It's. It's never going to be distracting, is it? If you take no. something that is, you know, uh, uh, essentially uh, a nameplate embedded in concrete, um, uh, and, and <laughs> try and spot as many of them as you can. Um, it's and they're all different. Yeah, there there are people who who will be able to tell you the, the history of the whole, yeah. it, you know, and just by looking at it, what year it was laid and stuff like that. You know, there's like train spotting or something. Yeah, Interesting yeah. that you say that because I went and did a little, of course, deep dive into that myself because I thought, oh, I'm just I'm going to publish these as I think we we've talked about this in the past as a broadsheet and um, with big kind of newsprint style because they they lend itself to a kind of a raw printing process 
uh, with maps and and texts of what the people are actually looking at. And uh, it's part of that was just before the pandemic, and I sort of let that go for a while. I'll, hmm. I'll get back to it soon. So, uh, Adrian, the one that you showed earlier, um, you said this was on a foggy day, and I I've I've put one of my photos in here, which um, is this one, which is, I think, one, one of my favorite photos that I've ever taken. And it's a very simple but very minimalist photo of trees in the fog. And I distinctly remember when um, I, I held a photo workshop in Japan and um, Martin Bailey was the like principal uh, and I was co-hosting it. And um, and he knew exactly where we were and it was very, very foggy and he told the bus driver, stop here. And the entire group, everyone had this big question mark on their face, like, what the heck are we supposed to shoot here? And uh, we spent, I don't even know, probably over half an hour there, probably longer. And the photo that you're seeing is already enhanced there's already more contrast in the photo that was actually visible there so we had yeah. um in terms of f-stops we had maybe half an f-stop of contrast in this scene like it was virtually <laughs> invisible and it ended up wow. it was too it was too minimalist for me so i uh <laughs> played a bit with the contrast and just tickled out those f trees in the front a little bit and the rest just disappears <laughs> in nothing fog makes Landscape is minimalist. Beautiful. It oh, just takes amazing. the background out it. and makes it yeah. so yeah. Uh, so special. So so uh, yeah. fog is now one of my triggers when 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 I see there's mm -hmm. fog outside. I go, sorry, um, gotta go and <laughs> Got, spend an hour. Go. <laughs> That's funny. I'm the same way. If it's foggy, yeah, I am yeah. out Fog's with my brilliant. camera like yeah. immediately. Yeah. yeah. I might yeah. do the same with rain. Just interesting situations that are mm. where sure. other people tend yeah. to not go out then yeah it becomes well it's a, it's a it's a thing isn't it for landscape photography you know bad weather as you call uh, as we would call it is is often the best weather for landscape mm. photography yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you know you Certainly. can do more interesting things mm. the more but, threatening the better, better that's cloud, a beautiful yeah. photo chris i really like it a lot really good you chris wins the minimalist <laughs> challenge <laughs> yeah. so far <laughs> okay it's okay. the fewest, the fewest a things in a photograph yeah <laughs> Oh, I made a mistake. So. I had a tree and a human in mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One tree. Well, trees is okay. Humans is okay. We're just mixing them. Yes. <laughs> well, there we go. So, so what, what are we taking from all this? Because uh, just, just as a, just a thought, we been that we we have a podcast here called the Future of Photography and all. It's, it's not as nice as this is to ramble about minimalism. It is very. Um, it is very popular at the moment. We talked about that a bit, and I have to admit, I am tickled by the whole minimalist concept a bit uh less so about decluttering because i've never really had a lot of clutter myself but uh although i can't say that for the rest <laughs> of my household <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I, I, I would say oh go ahead um i just want to say um i think i think everyone can can take something away from here reduction is kind of uh, a beautiful thing in photography and re you can reduce in content of the photo you can reduce in in color palette you can reduce in maybe Post. even just the concept of the photo maybe a reduced concept uh that is yeah. not sure maybe visually even more more than a minimalist photo but maybe the concept itself might be reduced you know what if you're stuck or blocked or you can't think of anything you know it's kind of lighting your creative fire it's a brilliant exercise that's in, a good point um, yeah. isn't it just mm. kind of I yeah forcing I'd yourself add, to look specifically i i would add to that and say that the the beauty of approaching um minimalist photography is it does not require any kind of specific gear you could go with the the cheapest worst you a handmade thank you graham handmade camera <laughs> um all, all the rest of that in, in the most to the most uh, beautiful, complex eight by ten studio camera, and you will get a, a really great, evocative, simple composition that could be very uh, emotive. Um, and that, I think, is the beauty. As technology strengthens, uh, certainly directions as AI becomes more sophisticated, and our ability to control imagery 
um, uh, widens, um, mm -hmm. the impulse for minimalism remains the same. And it, it's not gear dependent. It's not technology dependent. It really is a way of seeing. And I think that's really what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Now, here's an exercise um, to help everyone minimalize, and that uh, is the film posters without text challenge. Have you ever Googled mm. film posters without text? If no. you no. You know, there's there's web pages over and over that take famous film posters. Let me just switch that here on the mm -hmm. screen. Um, that take film posters and remove the text so you end up with just the poster the image um here we go with just the image and lots of those are instantly recognizable um and uh the godfather is pretty interesting here's, here's pretty casino instant, royale i mean uh -huh. it's just a photo with a lot of space that's not necessarily minimalism but mm -mm. it it takes it reduces things and uh it, it kind of teaches you to to leave space in a photo to yeah take stuff out so um i do this on workshops where the entire group is uh is supposed to take pictures that can easily be converted into a film poster i like this i instance. actually find this a constant challenge because i have to do um like uh display posters for outside for whatever exhibition happens to be on yeah. in our space and it's a constant challenge to me to find ways and find images to it's amazing lots you, of space if you look if you google those um film posters without text and look at them in some it's really amazing how little there is when you take the text out mm. well i mean sometimes that's the thing isn't it it's um you, know, you you've got to have, it's it's the text that tells people what it is isn't it yeah, so because yeah. you know, when people have seen these things of course these images might mean something to us i mean the one you've got on screen right now you look at that and that's like an iconic that that's mm. rain man right and that's a mm. movie that was made 30 odd years ago if not maybe slightly more <laughs> probably um, more <laughs> uh, and and you know it is immediately it's it's part of our the cultural fabric of of being interested in movies with a new movie of course you don't have that do you so if you look at a mm. picture of uh well you, you said casino royale okay so so that might be sort of in a middle ground because you've got a picture there of daniel craig and he's got some he's got some gambling chips on the table in front of him right okay so so that could easily well there you go <laughs> That's rocky. that is rocky right there <laughs> Mm. So, so those sorts of things, uh, yeah, uh, uh, and the there's a, there was a Dirty Harry one you were showing earlier mm. as well, or the Godfather, yeah. So, so you've got the, yeah the cla Should classic, one, yeah, uh, yeah uh, Dirty Harry picture or the Godfather picture with Marlon Brando, yeah, things like that. Some or, or Back to the Future, some of those, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Exorcist, is it? Yeah. Uh, Terminator, yeah. The, the, these are all relatively straightforward. And not but, very but they're, not, they're only straightforward because they're part of our cultural memory. I don't know if zeitgeist is quite the right word here, but but they're part of but they're part of our cultural memory for a lot of us, aren't they? But if you took these, if you took this same set of images that we've caught, we've all called up on a Google search, and you took them to a different part of the world, let's say you took them to somewhere in in the, the east of Asia. Um, where, or, or, or maybe thinking of another area of the world that has a, a huge thriving movie industry, but is very different, you know, in India. Um, you know, would these would these images be recognisable at all? I mean, you know, mm. I'm, I'm looking at my screen. My laptop screen now has got the Top Gun photo of Tom Cruise <laughs> with the girl peering over <laughs> his shoulder, right? You know, you know that that is something that is, you know, look, all of you just had an, an instant reaction to it. <laughs> But if you show me, and, and I'll tell you what, that's another good example, Chris, actually, because yeah, um, uh, you've told me before that the Bill and Ted movies weren't released in Germany. Well, they were, but they weren't never ever, even close as big as they were in in England. So if you showed US. me a Bill and Ted film, yeah, po movie poster, uh, I'd recognize that instantly without the, you know, uh, without the words on it. But, you know, I would go celebrate thickness and. <laughs> I would I would go, oh, I think that's Keanu Reeves. What's he doing on that poster? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's so that that is interesting. So mo movie posters themselves are an exercise in minimalism, are they? Is that interesting? 
Anyway, that was just a little sidebar. Um, <laughs> that was good. That's I did good. bring a couple of um, I think it's a rabbit hole, technically. You know, yeah. current photographers in with me because yes. I realized after a while that I, um, I was kind of Sure. Most Our of the stuff I was super- looking at were like tips on how to improve your, your minimalist photography. Cool. Um, yeah. So this guy, uh, Hiroshi Sugimoto, has this gorgeous oh. um, uh, One of minimalist my favorites seascape. in the whole universe. Yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? Um, oh. His work is astounding. Have you seen his new work just as about color? Oh, no. Um, from lights and filters. Yeah. Oh, maybe I did actually. Yeah, when I was actually, you know what? I think I did. He stole that one from Gursky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. We've surely all got one of those in our in our catalog oh, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Just the horizon line. Yeah. See, this is this is pure minimalism. Yeah. That's great. Is that? So. Yeah, I I I recognise these as being aesthetically pleasing mm. um uh, i do that that, is, yeah well, but, they are. but but ultimately i mean there's what yeah there, there is one here that it, it is almost literally just a gradient from a sort of mid gray to a to a slightly lighter gray <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. and it may well be a photograph and it may well be a photograph of something um but you know where where does is is there is is there a, a line where you go so so far into minimalism that the 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 they are almost total isn't abstraction? I suppose. I mean, uh, well, every yeah, yes. concept yeah. can be can be extended to the max, can't it? Mm. I I think that with Sugimoto's photographs, as so many collections, uh, kind of validate their individual images. That that what makes uh, these individual images even the most minimalist kind of gray filter is is because that there there are many of them all done in more or less the same way with the same composition and the same horizon line and and so it's the collection of them that brings relevance so to, it's a body of work. So, so as yeah. I look at these, a lot of them look to be mm-hmm. shot in something like a four by three ratio with the horizon in the dead center. Yeah. Yeah, you remember his pictures of movie screens in empty mm. theaters. Uh, same kind of thing, mm. uh, where he just went into a empty movie theater, had them run the projector, and just open the lens. And uh, mm. he did many, many of these. Mm. And it is they're kind of it. That's the look. It's on the screen there. It's about how they make you feel, isn't it? As opposed yeah. to anything else, really. I like it. I think I'll watch that video later. It's a bit long for this one, but mm. um, so, so how do I switch off all the computational gubbins on my phone then, so that I can just take a minimal photograph? Because <laughs> because mm. I don't think my iPhone would let me take a minimal photograph. If I, I got to get a proper would. camera out and a roll of film and stuff like that, I mean, it might not feel <laughs> it might not find a person in the photo and make sure they are well exposed and uh, and so on, but. I don't see why, yeah, why you couldn't just use the phone. In, a bit of playing in post as well is powerful, isn't it? Yeah. I think the first thing you'd want to do is use the longer part of your lens. That eliminates a lot of extraneous <laughs> information. That's uh, that's one of the things with <laughs> wide angle. The more wide angle, the more clutter. Yeah. Mm. And it gets yeah. more difficult to minimize photos, for sure. Yeah, unless you're in the desert or the arctic <laughs> yeah actually yeah the sea the sea is a great place isn't it or, or yeah. on a mountain top or yeah somewhere like I, yeah I, I think humans are very comforted by minimalism uh because they reduce their kind of overall information patterns to uh very little and that's comforting we don't have to work hard at processing we just can have an emotional reaction and at the same time mm. it gives us a vessel that we can pour almost anything in that we want yeah even clutter 
I don't anybody else feeling really calm and soothed as a result of this conversation. <laughs> Looking I've, at all this minimalist oh, yeah. imagery, just, it's, it's making like, us all sleepy. Well, um, no, yeah, not sleepy actually, just to sort of chill, you know, chilled and relaxed <laughs> and you know, yeah. contemplative and and yeah, I feel I feel yeah, good. Right, I feel good right now as a result of this conversation. <laughs> uh-huh. At some point, we should do a show on uh, the opposite. Uh, what can we call that? Uh, Maximalism. Clutterism. <laughs> Clutterism. <laughs> yeah. I can't do this. There's a lot of photos on my hard drive with clutter on them. I just yes. tend to not show them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, seem to, I seem to remember some years ago, there was, a, uh, I think, a Japanese photographer who um, uh, we, we did a, a, made a collection of images of... of children with their possessions and and how you know boys would have entirely pale blue possessions and girls would have entirely pale pink possessions and they'd be put out you know they'd be the 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 children would be photographed perhaps in blue or pink clothing sat on their beds with all of their possessions on their bedroom floor in front of them and and it was a there was there was a study of a, a number of these just just to and i think the the idea was you know, to 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 investigate and shine a light on some of the cultural stereotypism of, of children and the way we treat children differently. Was, uh, mm. There was a lot of clutter in those images. Yeah. Hmm. Do you yeah. think that that uh, what what we are um, discussing is, uh, in many ways, uh, part of the uh, cultural issues of too much information that we have? Yeah, too, too much, much news, stuff, consumerism, um, all that. Yeah, but stuff. it's even more than consumerism. Mm. Just turn on the radio and hear everything that's going on in the world at the same mm-hmm. time, filtered through again a a kind of media corporate um, uh, initiative uh, for good and bad. Um, but but uh, I think that that our ability to feel soothed by minimalism is about. Uh, a reaction to the information maximalism <laughs> that we are. Yeah, uh, well, the, I think that's certainly, for, for me, that's certainly part of my own personal interest in it as a concept is that, you know, as, as many of us do, I live a busy life. I'm being pulled every which way. And actually, in the last few years, um, I wouldn't say that I've caught the bug of minimalism, but it has infiltrated my thinking and caused me to perhaps be a bit more intentional about stuff so you know I don't really do social media I don't really watch television I curate stuff which of course has an opportunity for bias but you know I try to curate stuff from you know in in a you know I'm trying to be conscious of that bias and curate Mm. what what my incoming information is to try and avoid some bias um uh, how's that working for you Mm. Uh, <laughs> do you know what i um i don't think ignorance is bliss but i think for the but the because i, I think well it's I definitely it, less stressful Adrian. it is less stressful but um yeah. it, it helps it helps mm. um I, I, even like to it, isn't it? you don't need to know everything no okay. if it's really important that information will find its way into your ears yeah well, you know <laughs> i think that's absolutely true yeah. mm. i I made a, a challenge once to a, a friend of mine as many years ago that I would not listen to news, watch television news, listen to the radio for three months. Three would months. Read a newspaper. Three months, Holy 90 days. God. And that we would get together. He could ask me anything on honor system. I, I really didn't. He could ask me about contemporary um, news events, anything, and that I would be able to answer them. And sure enough, but what I did is all of the things that were in the news, all of the stories, and whatnot, I read books about it. Like, yeah. You know, I read, the, you know, the history of the Balkans or the, you know, the, the you know, uh, contemporary uh, travel, whatever, whatever had been happening in the news when I started. And it gave me a real depth of information, the likes of which made me three months later understand what I was reading in a much deeper way. Yeah. Um, but it provided just what Imar was saying, is that you just hear, I didn't avoid when people were talking about it. I just absorbed it through social discourse, yeah. real social discourse. Um, and so I, I, I do think that we, 
uh, absorb news and visual information as much for entertainment or distraction as mm. for well-being. And, and I think understanding that gray zone between where it becomes destructive emotionally and where it is kind of soothing and beneficial to our lifestyle is something that I think we all have to work on because I don't think there's any uh, okay. kind of true path forward here, uh, the assault being as loud as it is daily. Well, let us declutter by looking at the pics of the week. How about that? <laughs> by getting the hell out of here, yeah. <laughs> I want to get into some maximalism today. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, I'll start. I'll start with a video that I recently came across by a Chinese photographer, um, Sales Chong, and what he does is he releases oh, I, shutters of eighteen different cameras, and oh, it is very, very <laughs> yeah, simple video in front of a white background. You see the microphone. You see the camera, and he. Um, it, it's it's just a very simple, beautiful piece of uh, videography. The, the hand and, on a shutter and or the cameras being on self timer, going click, and they all have their distinct sounds, and they're all very, let's say, famous cameras. If you've ever here's a Polaroid, for example, an SX seventy, but then it it ends up going over to medium format, some digital medium format, lots of analog. Here's a, a Mamiya mm. RB67, which I think we call the tank. Um, <laughs> as a... Um, no, a, a universal. A Mamiya, universal, yeah. Um, then there's a medium format bellows cameras and all different kinds of cameras, a Cinar, <laughs> uh, large That's format so cool. and so on. And you hear the sound of the shutters at different shutter speeds and it's a very soothing, beautiful like a sleep life meditation. experience. I call it ASMR for photographers. So <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fan of it, but um, I'll let everyone else uh, listen to this on their own time. Mm -hmm. So that's a great <laughs> pick. Uh, I'm, I'm just yeah, yeah. When I saw this, because because on on our German podcast, Happy Shooting, I used to we used to do a little sound quiz where people would send in sounds of their camera shutters and we'd play that at the beginning and then at the end we would uh, resolve it yes. and uh, <laughs> it, was a, it was a fun little exercise I like sounds, sounds of cameras are part of the mm. soothing, mm -hmm. soothing yeah, we've and done several times the, on the Sunny the 16 thing. podcast we've run competitions of guess the shutter yeah, guess the camera <laughs> play yeah. the shutter sound and guess what camera <laughs> it's from yeah. so uh, Adrian your pick Ah, well, my pick of the week um, is uh, a photographer who, whose work I enjoy. Uh, this is a, a fella called Adrian Villa. Uh, he is a Spanish-American photographer, uh, by which I mean he, he is both Spanish and, and American. Um, he lives in, between the two countries. Um, and he, uh, his, uh, his photography is, is black and white uh, landscape photography, often very minimalist. Um, you know, often uses long exposures, a, a great user of, of fog <laughs> in, in the way that we discussed earlier. Uh, and he also has a, a YouTube uh, channel, which is really interesting. He talks about he, the way that he makes photographs and he'll, he's, he'll be one of these guys that says, you know, get out there, don't worry too much about equipment, just get out there and shoot and, and go and see things. Uh, so uh, I, if, if people haven't heard of him, go and check out his work because it's, um, it's really very interesting stuff. He's got a book coming out soon, which I've got on pre-order at the moment. Which It's uh, beautiful. I'm looking, looking mm. forward to get. Excellent. Lovely. Very beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah that. beautiful. Lovely. Ah, Jeremiah, mm. yours. I thought I'd kind of del <laughs> deliver a very large minimalist. <laughs> picture yes you could so, say that you could say that this is a story of the largest photograph ever um 111 feet wide oh my god wow yeah uh how is that printed or <laughs> with great difficulty it's, it's a difficulty. pinhole, it's a pinhole <laughs> photo it's a pinhole yeah. Oh my and God. Uh, and the yeah. hanger that they have this in is the pinhole camera so it was shot ah. in place wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Which which kind of reduces your choice of 
composition a bit, but um, mm-hmm. <laughs> just ever so slightly, that. yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I just love stuff like this. What can I tell you? <laughs> yeah, this is to very, be. very fascinating. I've seen a little video documentary about it where they like they hang this oh, canvas wow. and when they Look. develop it they they have to throw it on the ground and make a little dam around it and then put the developer in there with like brooms and and swoosh it around on you know, the on oh the canvas. God. That's just amazing. This is everybody. How many volunteers like 30 yeah. people looks like 40 it, people yes. <laughs> moving this <laughs> paper into place which wow. is linen actually. And then Fire hydrants, washing it. Yes. Uh, how do you water? How do you water a photo this size? You need the fire brigade. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, I, you know, I look that's forward so to uh, the day when fine pixel LED screens can cover uh, large um, high rises and office buildings, <laughs> and one could then yeah. just make them invisible <laughs> or reflect. What's around them? So, you if know, I recall I, correctly, isn't there a Kickstarter open at the moment, or a, or a GoFundMe, or something for an eight by ten digital camera? Uh, there is an eight by ten digital camera. I think it all in air quotes only does like eleven megapixels, or maybe twenty maximum. But um, they it, have built like a sensor, and they're trying to get it off the ground. So. The cost of the sensor would be significant. I mean, we're still we're still place. talking seventy thousand dollars for this camera or more. Uh, mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I not, I remember not. I re- uh, speaking of putting pixels on buildings. Another sidebar here. Uh, I remember being in Vienna, and the the church in Vienna has two steeples, and from far they look fairly normal and getting closer walking closer one started to look a bit off and more and more off and it turns out it was in scaffolding and they had a photo of the steeple (laughs) attached on the outside (laughs) to make it less conspicuous less jarring to look at and uh, the, the closer I got the more I realized how low the resolution was we're talking uh not dpi but ipd we have inches per dot (laughs) that size of individual dots and if if the moment you got really close there was just dots nothing but dots Mm -hmm. no detail nothing Uh, you know years ago i I remember doing a commercial we were shooting in uh in nice the studio uh there and uh the studios are quite old and beautiful and the you know, I built these these stages with uh, ex, you know external uh, images outside the windows, etc. And we, you know, we use trans lights here in the U.S. And now we use either green screen and now soon LEDs for everything. But they had just blown up in the cheapest possible way a, a snapshot, black and white, mm-hmm. and put it outside. <laughs> And it looked fantastic. It wasn't in focus, inside. so it didn't really matter, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so the, the illusion, I think what we're trying to say is there are ways of doing it without being dependent on high technology, expensive yeah. technology, big gear. There is a possibility of doing this with what you have. Um, anyway. Mm-hmm. All right. Be inspired. Mm-hmm. And Imar, last but not least, your pick picks. You brought two, I picks. think. Yeah. The first one is, um, this is kind of incidental, actually. It was just a friend of mine told me about this at the weekend. And apparently there's tons and tons of stuff on here th- that you can use for free for the press um, or for anything they're using. You can pull this stuff into Irish videos. Irish Tourism Media Library. Yeah. Not wanting to particularly, well, maybe I am wanting to particularly... Um, Shout nope. out for Irish tourism, That's but um, I, you can put in locations um, and and f- find like drone footage and amazing photos that you can use for free in your content. Which That's I brilliant! Think is, it's pretty uh, cool. Uh, you are you sure you want to bring tourists? Interesting. All right, sure and you your oh, they stay away from me. The second one is um, the next exhibition that's forthcoming at the Art Centre where I work, and it is an exhibition of film photography. So um, scanned negatives printed on lovely kind of Hannah Mueller bag paper. And these images, some of which are quite minimal, are um, captured uh, during this uh, girl, Claire Murphy is her name. She studied cinematography, so this is her first exhibition of still photos. But um, lovely um, 
domestic sort of intimate scenes and close ups of her experiences in her um, kind of rural home during lockdown. So if so, you are anywhere near Tipperary, um, yeah, come see it. That'll be absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure we'll have our virtual tour up in place yeah. again, so people can always go and visit. Oh yeah, them. you've been you've been practicing the making website. these uh, virtual tours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sadly, I'm a long way from Tipperary. You mm. are, but oh. you know what? Not forever. Bad we'll here. You should have oh. sang this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think that brings us to the end of this episode. Minimalism, minimalism. This was not a minimalist episode. I think we've almost absolutely not. We're almost it's at an hour brilliant. today. Are so. we? Yeah, that's good yes, stuff. We are. <coughs> Interesting things. This to was talk a, this about. was an episode of sidebars, and I kind, of, <laughs> I kind of enjoyed this. I mean, it was different. Anyway, we are <laughs> online at the Future Photography. We have uh, social media at TFOP now. Wherever you find your other podcasts. If you are on YouTube, hey, click the subscribe button, give us a like, and we'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, everyone, take care. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Mm-hmm.